The G Pro Wireless, I still think that this is just a dog shit buy. Just kidding, of course I'm not balling enough to be throwing away my mouses. However, that does back the question. If you're the current owner of a Logitech G Pro Wireless, should you even consider upgrading to the G Pro Superlight model? Now, I think to answer that question, we need to take a closer look at both of the mouse. Now, look at that them both. There is quite a substantial difference between the price and also the weight. The weight there is difference between the 20 grams of the Superlight and the regular G Pro Wireless. The price is also around a 200 ringgit price difference. Uh, another difference is also the on switches which changes from the 50 million to the 20 million which is less prone to the double clicking issue that plagued the previous G Pro Wireless. Now unboxing the mouse is actually a pretty typical Logitech affair. You will of course get the mouse itself in which when you first held it in your hand you would be surprised at the lightness of the mouse. Uh, it is very light even compared to the uh, regular G Pro Wireless that I've used previously. In fact, at first I felt that it, was, it may be a bit too light for me. Other stuff in the box include the usual Logitech cable. This is the usual stiff cable that Logitech provides. It's not paracord. Can't believe Logitech is still giving us this cable. And also the dongle, which is I think pretty self-explanatory. Alright, now let's clear all of this mess and take a look at the mouse itself. Now when you pick up both of the mouse, it's actually a one-to-one -one copy compared to the, the ship is basically identical. Lah. There's no difference at all. However, what will surprise you is the weight difference is actually very substantial. The 20 grams really makes a difference. The balance of the supply is also better than the back heavy G Pro Wireless. Now, in terms of the clicks, I feel that honestly, for me, it feels the same. The 50, almost 50 and almost 20 feels very familiar. I'm actually more disappointed that Logitech did not go for something like a Kale 8.0 switch. Now the side clicks on the other hand feels way better on the new Superlight. It has very sharp and defined clicks, no more of those mushy feelings of the side clicks of the previous Deeper Wireless. The scroll wheel feels uh, very similar, for me there's no difference. Similar to the main clicks, lah, the OMO 20 and OMO 50, it feels very similar. I think um, it's also the, there's a slight step in each of the scroll but however there's not much difference between the two. Now, another big difference between the new Superlight and the previous G Pro Wireless is the PTF effect. It is so much better and glides much more smoothly, especially when I'm combined it with my Cordova mousepad. I mean, it's not the best PTF effect, but at least as a stock um, configuration, at least you don't have to upgrade the feed immediately. Okay, so considering this is a gaming mouse, how does it perform actually in gaming, especially compared to the previous um, G Pro Wireless? So in my opinion, the difference is actually quite substantial. I think it's because of the combination of the weight and the more perfectly balanced um, configuration of the new G Pro Superlight which is, has a very perfect 50-50 balance between the front and back of the mouse. Now maybe there's not the night and day difference between the G Pro Wireless and the G Pro Superlight. For me, if you need to summarize, the G Pro Superlight feels like a more, much more refined version of the original uh, G Pro Wireless. Uh, going back from the 60 gram G Pro Superlight back to the 80 gram wireless will make you feel, you know, a bit sluggish. However, at the end of the day, is the more expensive mouse worth it? Now, I actually had a similar conundrum around one and a half year back when I was comparing between the Logitech G Pro Wireless and the G305. And this is what I said previously. So I don't really game a lot nowadays. I game I think about on average one hour per day. So sometimes I play two hours, sometimes I don't play games at all. So in my case I do feel that the G305 um, suit me just fine. But what ended up happening actually is that after using the G305 for around one and a half month, I decided that I feel that the G Pro Wireless is still a superior product and I ended up buying the G Pro Wireless back again and I've been using it for one year plus and I couldn't be happier. Now I think this is also a similar case with the G Pro Superlight. Sure, it's more expensive than the normal G Pro Wireless at around 200 ringgit but you see that my, I use my computer almost every day. I do gaming almost every other day. So for me, the 200 ringgit uh, price disparity between the two products and considering the amount of time that I'm using the mouse I feel that it is worth it for me maybe not for some people but for me and uh, because I always use my mouse regularly I do feel that the 200 ringgit when you look at a bigger picture it's really worth it 
especially when you consider that the G Pro Super Lite is objectively a much better mouse compared to the usual G Pro Wireless. Now I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball. The situation uh, now in terms of wireless gaming mouse is different compared to two, two or three years back when the G Pro Wireless was launched. Nowadays, there is a lot of competing products which is also very good, especially when you consider products like the Glorious O or uh, the Pornage and its OEM line of mouse and also the Razer Viper Ultimate and even this model. This is a Dulux uh, M800 if I'm not mistaken. For just 150 ringgit, you can get a mouse that has a PWM 33-35 sensor, wireless, 75 gram, and this only costs around uh, 135 or 140 ringgit. So when you consider there is a lot more options right now, so I think that at the end of the day, rejoice. Um, at least there is more options for us as consumers to choose a wireless gaming mouse. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. As usual, if you like my kind of content where I review budget stuff and compare if it's worth it or not, which is price versus performance, uh, do consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like. I know it sounds cliche, but it really helps me especially as a small content creator. Anyway, see you guys next time. Ciao!